Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Let's Play Blaster Master Zero. In the last episode, we made our way through Area 3, and in this episode, we're going to figure out how to get something we couldn't before. Because if we look at our map, we have a dungeon to our right we can't quite get to. At least we don't know how to. Also, off screen, I filled up my health. Alex, why didn't you close the door? Anyways, to get there, it's just as simple as becoming Little Jason and crawling. Crawling ever so slowly through this little tube. Yeah, that's agonizingly slow. Anyways, let's enter the dungeon. Alright, I thought we needed the light device. And let's get out the... Alright, we already have our grenades equipped. Let's make our way through. Ouch, because we actually have an upgrade in here. An interesting one. It's an alternative to what we're using. Yeah, this place is just jam-packed full of electricity. And crap. Anyways, don't try to get hit too much, because your guard will only protect you from one hit at a time. Every few seconds, I guess. We don't need it shocking Jason's titties. I don't think I've commented on his new suit in this game. I think it looks really nice. It's a big health if you want it. Yeah, getting through there looks really tough, but it's really not, as you saw. Just kind of go with the flow. Anyways, you guys probably already recognize this area from the original. I certainly do, just based on how this little spot's designed. And if you do recognize it, then you absolutely know what boss is coming up. I showed my disdain for him in the original LP. Of the original Blaster Master. And honestly, I think he was made easier in this. Much easier compared to his original counterpart. Not leave me with that mouse, I didn't realize it was in the way. It is... The Lair of Photophage. Say hello to this jerk. With the wave gun and the stun mechanics, as you can see, he's no threat this time. So be really quick to get to him. As long as you stun him, that's all that matters. So just keep up the pain and he'll stay stunned and you'll never get touched. Remember, he will get quicker as he gets less and less clones. Well, less and less hymns. But I think they get less and less health, I'm not sure. Or I'm just hitting with more of the beam and it's doing more damage. Alright, he's almost done for, folks. Just a little more. And that's it. He still requires your focus, though. If you let him go for any kind of moment, he's gonna start multiplying quick. Anyways, we get the jump booster. Press the jump button in midair to perform additional jumps. Pretty much a double jump, actually. It does take up your SP gauge. One block every second jump. Anyways, I'm gonna meet you guys outside this tunnel. I know it's a silly cut, but whatever. Alrighty, we're back, and I just realized I only came back because I wanted to tell you guys, I'll meet you back in Area 2, where a life up was we couldn't get. So, I'll meet you guys there in just a minute. And we're finally back. If you notice a time jump, well that's because I was waiting for the baby to go. Anyways, we're back here in Area 2. As you can see, there's a life up we didn't get while we were here. But now we can get it with Hover. Or the double jump if you want to use that instead. Don't worry about those mines on the wall. They are literally no threat unless you're dumb enough to jump into them like that. Also, you can be a lot more, you know, use-heavy with your, uh, power-ups in this. At least ones like cover and whatnot. They make for really good maneuver tools. Since they don't take up as much, or they don't- they take- they did this way. Because your SP gauge refills, they can be great at maneuvering around really quick. And getting away from crap. And jump out and shoot that worm. There we go. And if we head to our right, huzzah, we get a life up. We get more health. 
Anyways, now I'm gonna meet you guys back in Area 1, so I'll meet you there in a second. Welcome back, guys. We're back here in Area 1. As you can see, there's our next objective, but we needed Hover to get to it. Ah, uh, you guys remember this tower from the original? The Hover Tower, I like to call it now. She's got a little bit of a facelift. It isn't that dirty, it isn't that dirt and grass mountainy look. It actually looks like a tower that's been man made. I guess to better fit in with the story. It's trying to be smart there, but I guess not. Anyways, let's enter the new area, Area 4. If you've seen the original, it's the sewers. Oh, hey, Jason, I found Fred's signal again. Excellent, where is it coming from? Let's see, seems like it's pretty far away. Looks like it's the glacial area. Okay, let's make our way over there. Yeah, there's no Fred here, sadly, as they just said. Ah, there's those bullet enemies that appeared in the second area of uh, the original game. Also, you can tell the music here has changed, which honestly, in my personal opinion, I don't like as much as the original. Not to say this track or any of the tracks in this game are bad, it's just preference. I honestly wish there was an option for the original tracks, or at least remixed versions of them. But whatever, that's just personal nitpicky crap. Screw me for caring about that kind of stuff. Fans be damned. Anyways, can we head right? Let's check right. Oh no, we can't head right. We need a key. So we'll have to explore the depths of the sewers to get a key. So onwards we go into the depths. And this place actually introduces introduces a new gimmick that wasn't found in the original. Just like the last place did. And the second area as a matter of fact. Every area but the first seems to do this. It introduces a kind of gimmick that wasn't in the original to distinguish the areas. As we have our first dungeon, let's explore it. So we gotta find that map. Nice, don't worry about falling into those holes. They will not insta-kill you. You will just take one point of damage and then come back onto the platform nearest to you. I'll say, yeah, we have the same little helmet dudes from the original. Although, regardless though, don't fall. You'll just risk getting rid of your gun power if you've gotten hit by an enemy or something. This isn't a very tough area. Though it is kind of long. At least the dungeon portions are, for one good reason. You probably won't see it in this episode, but... Trust me, you'll see it eventually. Alright, I'm gonna meet you guys out of here. This is just a power-up room. And we're back. It didn't take too long, but any time saved is good for me. So I really don't want the LP going on longer than it needs to. Especially because of this particular place. Yeah, there's power-ups in there if you need those. But we're looking pretty healthy, if you ask me. Alrighty, it's the sewer maze. There's been a little changed in this one. It's not as much of a maze as it was in the original. That's just kind of a long, meandering path. With little bits of... with little puzzle elements here and there. The puzzle's really simple to figure out, to be honest. Let me get my map ready. So I know the map is somewhere ouch in here. God, those little flies. So let's check out this dungeon where I think the gimmick is finally introduced. And I don't really like it. Not because it's poorly implemented or it sucks, just because it wastes time. This is the gimmick. Screen shakes. And if you're not high in the air, bam, you get carried off the water, take damage if you've been carried up for too long of a distance, and yeah, you can see where this is going. Mixed in with bottomless pits and these platforms to avoid the water, you're going to be doing a lot of waiting in this place. That is definitely sure. Okay, which way do we want to go? Thankfully, it's not in every room, but... 
You're gonna have to deal with it a lot as you approach the end of this place. Which sucks. I hope you have your grenades ready, because we have a bit of a s shortcut over here. Yeah, it was just another way of going about this thing. Alright, is it to our left? Yes, it is. I'm correct the way it waters. Oh, shit. As you can see, we just took one point of health damage, and that's it. Didn't realize the water was gonna come so quickly. My bad. Alright, come on. There it is. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy me standing still. In this episode, and definitely the next one. I'm sure DW fan will comment the same thing. Now, if you're close to an obstruction, like this when the water hits you, you won't take damage, you'll just be stopped in your tracks. So you can use that to your advantage to maybe speed through a little bit. But when you're in an area that's suspended above nothing but bottomless pit, I would recommend it. Let's get our health restored. And let's head down. We got little sluggy slugs. I need to die. need to pop them like zits. Like zits on prom night. Alrighty, you see the retry point? You know what that means. Gauntlet or mini boss. And it's a mini boss. I mean, gauntlet, sorry. Tadroll snack time. I have to fight a whole bunch of these tadrolls. Oh, I call them sluggy slugs? I'm an idiot. Thankfully, this one, you can kind of rush through it a little bit, I guess. I say. I think they start coming out quicker and quicker as we get further and further into this little gauntlet of enemies. Gauntlets are cool for your first playthrough, but on your second, they can be a little tedious. Bad boss. Now if you're feeling overwhelmed, feel free to use uh, this right here to stun him and get some uh, footing. Get some distance between you and the jerks. And as we unlock a, a, a kind of nifty power-up, I guess. Maximum shot. A shot that fires a wider beam. Hold the shoot button to charge it, then release it to fire. Problem, this one takes SP unlike the piercing shots. They aren't stupid. Because later on, we're going to get a means to infinitely... We're going to get a means to use these weapons without charging them. A little bit of spoilers, nothing huge. Screw you, damn flies. Jesus Christ. Alright, let me throw it back up on the map. It would be nice to have our map right now. And do we go down or to the right? Yeah, I'm kind of navigating this for the first time in a lot, a little bit. I just recently played this game. It's not too fresh in my memory. So you'll have to excuse me, friends. You, all the enemies have been doing all the damage to me. Little fly jerks. It looks like that was just a full circle. No! I'm gonna die to those little fly things. Unacceptable. I will not explode. I will not lose my payments on this car. I put too much money into it. Like I said, the insurance will not cover it. Alright, we got a bit of a tricky jump here. You gotta jump, and yeah, if you mess up, you're falling into the water. This is where I think the only time, or only one of two times, you'll get a safety net for that kind of jump. Otherwise, later on, it's gonna be a you do it or you're dot dead. Yes, we've got another dungeon in here. What awaits us in this dungeon? Well, you guys are gonna have to find out next time on Let's Play. Those look like faces.